Hey, a friend, Chris Van Deviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today in our 30-day series, I want to dig into the different ways of managing takes within Logic Pro 10, namely the take folder system with its quick swipe comping and the relatively new track alternative system. Now, take folders have been with us in Logic for a long time, and I find it to be vastly superior to more playlist style of systems for managing takes. Instead of you having to dice up different takes and then having to add fades and so on and so forth, Logic just does all of it for you within a nice, concise, and organized system. But I have to admit, track alternatives are a great system for managing different recorded ideas. So let's say you have a guitar solo or a synth lead, and you're trying out different versions of the idea. I find track alternatives great for flipping through those different ideas while you're listening to your arrangement, and so you're not messing with anything that maybe you wanna set in stone. You don't wanna have to go through and start comping and adjusting. You already have the part. Now you just wanna flip through and see which part is the best one. Now, I already have a video that's a deep dive into take folders and quick swiping, so this is gonna be more of a quick overview, but I'll link to that video within this video. Cool, so I have a riff here, and you know, it's guitar, it's bass, it's electronic drums, Let's just take a quick listen to it so we have something to latch on to for the rest of this video. Take a listen. And then I have a more sparse, I guess, verse right down here. Okay, so we have an idea. For this riff, I had to use take folders to help me cobble together the best guitar take or bass take that I could. And I also use track alternatives to try out different ideas for the drums. Let's start with take folders and we'll hone in on the guitar. I'm gonna solo the drums and the guitar here. And let's zoom in. Now we can see here that we have a region that has some audio and then some dead space at the tail end. And if we click on this triangle in the upper left-hand corner, we're gonna reveal about six different takes for this guitar part. And this is the beauty of take folders. It's a collapsible and expandable folder that lives right within your main tracks area. And when you don't need to see all of the takes within the folder, you can just close it up. And when you do need to cobble together different comp takes or composite takes, you can just pop it open and get to work. Really, the system is so simple. All you do is hover your mouse in the bottom half of a region. And when you want to test out different parts of different takes, you just click and drag across. And now we've switched from take six to take five for this one section. And Logic does the rest. It promotes it to the top or composite take. It adds fades. No slicing and dicing necessary and you're all good. And you could just collapse this and really just say, okay, we're done. Got our take. We don't even have to dig into the take folder anymore. And just to demonstrate the value of how quick and easy this is, let's take a quick listen to the guitar and just pick a section that might need to be tidied up. Here we go. Okay, so right about here feels a little sloppy to me. Let's select a different section. And just like that, it's been promoted. Let's take a listen. Beautiful, and we can just work our way down. Now, once you've cobbled together a composite take that feels good to you, maybe you wanna compile another composite take and then compare the two. Maybe composite A versus composite B to see maybe one works better than the other. It's really so simple. You just go to the letter or number that's next to the triangle in the upper left-hand corner, click, and here we can see the different composite takes and the different takes within this take folder. And we're just gonna hone in on duplicating the comp. Cool, now we have three comps and we can dig in and maybe we wanna adjust some part of comp C to be different from comp B. So let me just hover my mouse on either the left or right boundary of the different highlighted takes click and drag across. And now we've synced together take six the way that we had it prior to the adjustment we did with comp B. And anything that's grayed out obviously is muted. It's not part of the composite take. 
Anything that's highlighted is an active take. And now we can go right up to that C and then pick between A, B, or C. Just like that. So if you're deciding from here you want to record more and more takes, you don't have to lose the composite take that you spent time putting together. Instead, just duplicate the comp and then keep recording from there. And then you can flip through the different composites. Again, I have a whole video dedicated to the subject, so we're just really skimming through it. Really, what I'd like to highlight is track alternatives, because when they were first introduced to Logic, I wasn't so excited about them. When I first heard about track alternatives, I was like, okay, it's like playlists and Pro Tools. I'm not really interested, so I don't plan on using it. My bias against other DAWs really shines through in that thought process. But track alternatives are actually really awesome, and here's why. In my case, I had some drum tracks, but I wasn't quite sure which performance would work for the riff that I had written. I recorded different drum ideas on different track alternatives, which allowed me to flip through the different ideas or performances. So first we need to enable track alternatives. I use option T, which opens the menu for the different buttons and functions that can appear in the track header. But you can also right click on the track header and go down to track header components. And right here we have the option for track alternatives. So let's now pop open the different track alternatives that I have for this drum kit here. So we're gonna show an active. Cool, so we have A, B, C, and D. And they're even different styles of regions. For example, some of the regions are step sequencer, while others are MIDI regions. And let's test drive some of these different ideas. So I'm just gonna solo just the drums. And if I press this power button, we can now listen to this particular performance. It's not promoted to the top here. Well, let's take a listen and then flip through. As you can see, we can flip through the different ideas and it's not quite like a take folder. You're picking one versus the other. Track alternatives are like playlists in Pro Tools where you actually have to chop up the regions and then promote those chopped up sections to the top level so you can compile a take manually. But as you heard, we listen to three different ideas for these drums. And then if I decide that A is the performance that I actually prefer, we can press this arrow right next to the power button. And we've now promoted A to the top level, so this is now the active track alternative. And B has been put into the inactive track alternative category. So it's muted and not active. If I decided I wanted to use part of a region and add it to the top level track, we could do that too. In this case, I'm gonna use the MIDI regions as step sequencer regions can get a little funny if you start chopping them up. I'm gonna promote E. I'm gonna select this section of take D we're gonna split it, and then I'm gonna hold Option, click and drag it up. So now we're starting to create a composite track alternative, but you actually have to go through the process of chopping things up and promoting them. And if this was an audio region, you would have to actually add the fades yourself for smooth, seamless edits. And once we're done, we can just collapse the entire inactive section. Just hover our mouse over here, click, and then hide inactive. But we can also flip through the different track alternatives just by clicking, holding, and then selecting the track alternative that we prefer. And these two drum tracks are actually similar in performance. So if I set this back to B, I can highlight both, click and then select C, and then flip both of them. Set these both to A, boom. It's really an interesting system that I'm starting to warm up to. So I recommend take folders specifically for audio. If you're recording a vocalist or a guitar performance again and again, it's the same performance, you're just trying to get the best take of that performance or cobble together different sections of different takes for the best composite take. Whereas I use track alternatives when I'm testing out different ideas for a song. Maybe I have one bass idea, but I wanna try another bass idea. In that case, I would go here and then create a new track alternative, which gives me a clean slate to start recording again. And then once again, if we show the inactive, we can see E through A, and we're going to record to track alternative F. I hope you can see that Logic's system for managing takes and alternatives really is far beyond anything else out there. It really puts the decision in your hands for how you want to manage takes and different performances, and it's seamless and smooth to use. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, 
whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.